I met a gypsy. It's so so time is finite. So it's one thing is for certain is there's not going to be any more time. And most of the riders of the privateers, including myself, there, there's a, a small opportunity for success. Mm -hmm. And from a 50 rider, I feel that the sport does a really bad job at telling that, you know, we're, we're, we're taught that you can be an astronaut. You can be the president of the United States if you want to. And it's, Granted, I'm not trying to tear anybody down. I'm just saying that you, the likelihood is I, I've got more of a chance of being electrocuted on a damn bidet than I do making money <laughs> racing Supercross. And it's just it's just real shitty. Like people think that being a professional athlete racing motorcycles is like being a professional athlete in anything, and it's not true. Like there is there's a there's a stigma that these guys make so much money and they don't and um, it's, it's called the inverse gambler's uh, fallacy where if you, I, I've, I've adapted it to moto, but essentially what it states is if you're at a roulette table and you throw a couple times and it comes up red, you've got a higher probability of it than going to black the next time. The risk versus ruin on a dirt bike is anytime you put your egg over that damn dirt bike, you're race, you're riding at a hundred, 125%. The chances of something going wrong is greater each time you throw your leg over that. And a lot of the privateers are just brainwashed, just riders in general are brainwashed that this of working your ass off every day is going to lead to retirement and leading to providing for your family. And 99% mm. of us end up the doing exactly what I did. You know, they, they get kind of washed out from the sport, some catastrophic industry injury i've had a couple I, I i'm not in a wheelchair but i've got some that if, if we want my resume jace i will certainly talk about it but i'm not here to <laughs> talk about the 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 shitty shit that i've been through because people have been through worse stuff than me i'm just stating uh in a, a very drawn out way that the risk versus reward when it comes to racing motorcycles is not worth it and i am so jaded in that fact that I was sold that there was a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, that mm. once you get close to the end of the rainbow, it's it's not there. Like having 150% pro payback when uh, you get a moto and when you get inside the top when at a professional race, it's just not, it's not advantageous. You, you spend 10 grand on your dirt bike, you spend five grand on parts for your dirt bike, you spend 800 bucks to get to the race, you spend 800 bucks to sign up for the race, you spend 500 bucks for entry fee and just pit passes and hotel rooms and shit and food. Like it doesn't add up when you then come home with $1,800 maybe when the risk is you could ruin your life forever. And the chances of, I, I guess the, the, longevity of a rider is you could become a pro at 16 you are damn near done by 25 it just mm. statistically yes there's some guys like brayton and kevin windham and that mike larocco that can ride you know john down i don't think he even started riding getting a fact ride until he was almost 30 but you know those are the exceptions they're not the rule the majority of mm. us are the rule and Perhaps I didn't even answer the question, Jace, but I'm, I'm yeah passionate no, I about mean, it. And yeah, so I guess it's like the you get sold the dream that if you work hard and then you you know you get a factory ride and you make millions of dollars and you crush monster pussy and that's the fucking that's the moto dream. Uh, and for you know in the reality, that's like one percent of one percent of people that even make it in the sport but i don't know it's like is that a problem with the sport as much as it is a problem with people's uh selling of the sport it's like where did you learn that like where did you learn that you would be if you worked hard and got a factory ride you'd make millions of dollars like you know what i mean like where does that message come from <sighs> see um because I know what you're saying. Like, you know, as a I'm kid, over... as a kid, I yeah. was the, I had the same thing. You know, like I was like, I want to fucking race. I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna be the man. Like, 
And then by fucking 15, I was like, oh, okay, I'm just not good enough. Like, it just seemed very apparent yeah. to me, like, very quickly. And I'm a pretty good rider, even, like, you know, now. Like, I can go and ride most tracks or do whatever on a bike. But it's like, I had no illusions that that 1% of 1% would be me. So it's like, I don't know, where does that messaging, like, really get in and brainwash people? Yeah, see, so here's where I'm, I'm kind of, I guess, talking in, in circles here. I was an ant amongst giants, and I never mm. wanted to make millions of dollars in, in yeah, it would be cool to smash monster pussy, but I never wanted to do that. Bro. I just wanted to... <laughs> it's fucking overrated. <laughs> I know syphilis and shit doesn't sound like fun. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm not saying that the, that was, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> okay, finishing, finishing what, what I'm saying is I just wanted to be, make a living racing dirt bikes. Okay. Cause I knew nothing else. I was, my dad was a pro in the seventies and before I even got a bicycle, I got a dirt bike. And so mm. I was sort of, Hey, this is what we're doing. And at age three, you know, I'm riding a dirt bike. At age five, I'm racing. And when back in the 70s, my dad could win 600 bucks uh, on a Friday night at the one yep. of the tracks. And yep. a new dirt bike was like 650. You know, it, things are much different as far as inflation goes. And so maybe we were brainwashed a little bit from the get go that, you know, I remember my dad racing with the rent money and all sorts of stuff, racing the Pikes Peak Hill Climb and all sorts of different stuff. So I was kind of brainwashed. And if you think of where things go is you've got the moto dad effect mm. where we've got a bunch of people that are just living through their kids. And we see all the money that's at the amateur nationals and all this stuff. And we want the best for our kids. Mm. And we want to think that we all can be that, that 1%. And, and I'm just going to be completely transparent with you, Jace. I believe that I was one of those 1%. I was not the 1% of the 1%. So you take 1% of the best riders in the world. And I feel like that's anybody that held their pro license. You are a badass motherfucker on a dirt bike that can race with the best in the world. Granted, you could be lapped by the best in the world. Granted, I think there's some other implications that help other people, but, um, that 1% of all the other pros in the world are really the top guys. We're talking about the Tomax, the uh, Ryan Dungies. Those are the guys that everyone is, is trying to be. I didn't want to be those guys. I just wanted to go race to race and live the dream of racing motorcycles, but I didn't have the income in order to do that. And I feel that uh, there's a lot of money involved in racing motorcycles right now that, um, I asked for a lot of money when I was racing. It was like, I remember being 25 years old and, you know, going to some of the car lots and giving them my resume and saying, Hey, this is the stuff that I've done, blah, 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 blah. And then they're going, dude, you're, you're 25 years old. Like, you know, why don't you get a normal job? And I'm like, dude, cause I know nothing else. I know nothing besides racing a damn dirt bike. Um, have you ever heard of Plato's allegory of the cave? Mm -mm. Jace? No, nah, so, please tell me. Okay, I, I guess I will just uh, pause. And So Plato's allegory of the cave is he states that you've got people that are locked in a cave their entire lives. The, the It's completely dark. Uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah, are yeah, chained yeah. to the yep. wall. Yeah, and then there's like a little Keep fire going. behind yep. them so that there's... Yep. Yep. So they know nothing. They just know the shadows of the fire. And so one of those guys actually break out and escape and go into the world and there's nothing. They just breathe in fresh air and, you know, seeing how beautiful earth actually is. They run their ass back to the cave because they know nothing different. And I, I feel that that's where a lot of the privateers are is they work their entire lives for a goal that just, they keep getting knocked down and knocked down and knocked down. They know nothing else but racing motorcycles. And and I would like to see, I don't know if it's changing the, the age. I, I know they've played around with a little bit of part being 16 years old to 18 years old. I just, these guys, they're, they're going to be successful because if they can, imp, if they can take the effort that they did for racing mm. motorcycles of riding every day, working out all the time, 
they're going to be successful in building a business and, and, and such and such. As long as they are healthy, they're not in a wheelchair. We see time and time again that it just takes – it's over in an instant with these riders getting hurt. And that's where I would like to – I don't even know – what I'd like to see as far as some education on building some different skills and that motorcycle racing isn't all of it. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.